Good evening, all. I wrap scene with your financial market wrap up, and this wrap up is for the evening of Tuesday, the 13th of June, 2023, in the time just after 6.25 p.m. Central Time. Before we get into the charts and the analysis, let me give you some analysis as to the CPI because we're in that two-step dance. The first dance step was today, you put the left foot in, and on it, you look at the CPI numbers. The bottom is what I care about. The consumer CPI year over year up 4%. They expected that. The prior, when you look at it going back to April, it was down, it was 4.9. So this market has collapsed big. Now it's gonna be hard from this point on to just keep dropping it dramatically. And is the 2% that the Fed shoots for out of this market at 4% now, or is it out of the core CPI? Well, it's of the core CPI. That's what they're trying to get down. This number also dropped exactly as the market expected. You went year over year at 5.3%. That's what the market looked for, and it was down two tenths. And as you know, I gave you all kinds of scenarios here about this. So how did the market react to it, and what should your reaction be? A couple of things. Tonight I wrote in my full research report, which you can... If you're not a subscriber, you can get a trial to it by going to our website at irapstein.com under free offers. And I point out the time frames from when the Fed goes into a pause, goes into a cut, and where the recession kicks in. Each time you come to the end of one of these cycles, history shows you go into a recession. How big the recession doesn't matter to me. That's not what it's about. It's the timing of it that matters more to me than anything else. I'm on record saying if you have a strong labor market, it has to be a shallow one. But is it coming? Well, history says it is if the Fed goes into the cut phase. The pause is the beginning of it. So tonight I give you the graphs on it. I show you everything. I show you the dates, where it's at. If you're not getting my newsletter, that's your problem. The next step, what should the Fed do? Well, basis those numbers, I realized that the Fed fund page at the uh, CME, it's called the CME Fed Watch page, um, is showing like a 93, 94% probability that the Fed is going to go to a skip pay, pace. Now, they made up that term. It's really a pause, but they want it to be a skip because they want you to know that instead of just looking with the left like this, oh, when are we going to cut and go down there? They want you to go, no, we might go this way with our right and have to raise rates again. If history so far out of uh, Australia and Canada is any guideline, they're going to have to raise rates. I don't know if you saw the wage inflation today in the UK. It almost guarantees they got to go up next week. And we're going to get on Thursday the European Central Bank, and I think they're going up on rates. So if the U.S. is going to pause, what happens to the dollar? Well, you would think it would drop compared to other currencies that are going to raise rates most likely. Then what about the stock market and the stock indices? So here was the difficult thing today. The bonds and notes were falling. In other words, futures dropping, yields climbing. Uh, you were down almost a full point in the 30-year bond. That's a big number. So something is adding to interest rates. Well, if interest rates are going up, what's that have to do with the Fed then going into the pause? I understood the dollar. I got that. The dollar down, interest rates up, and gold and silver don't know what to do with it. As for the energy markets, what you have here is a, a series where China has stepped to the marketplace and put out its warning sign everywhere that it's about to do something to stimulate the economy. There are just guesses as to what it could be. It could be something with mortgages, something to help the developers finish the properties that are not built there. They still have a very high COVID rate going on, if you read the press, very high, it's not small. Uh, but they have to do something along the line. So the first things they've been doing is cutting interest rates. They did another series today. First, they took it from the deposits, the depositors away. Now they're doing it something in the repos. They took it like a tenth again, and they put in some money, 280 million for an economy their size. That's not a lot to put in the banking system, but they're prepping you that something is coming. We could wake up any morning and get it. With that, 
The energy market gained about $2 a barrel and the copper market gained seven, eight cents today. Okay, now I understand what's there. The other part of the dance is gonna to be tomorrow. Which way does the Fed think this should go? That's gonna be it. You cannot tell me that you're dropping enough in the core CPI to think that you've tipped it and it's gonna pick up and drop at the speed that the headline is doing. You're going down there a tenth or two tenths when you drop at all. You're not doing that in the headline, but the headlines, how do I put it? It's the low hanging fruit. You can drop that all the way through. That's down. You'll get to the point where it doesn't drop a lot more. As long as people have jobs, money chases goods. That simple. So when you look at the S&P, up and away you go. It's a nonstop freight train going right on up. And where it stops, your guess is as good as the guy next to you. You can see how the market just keeps climbing that wall. And it's not a wall of worry. It's a wall of worry that you're not in. Not a wall of worry, oh, is the market gonna peak here? Maybe I gotta do. This market is a market, especially the S&P and NASDAQ, where if you are a um, tech company, especially one having to do with a chip, software involved in AI, you're, you're in heaven and people are just gonna chase you on each one of the breaks. Right, will it get overdone? For sure it'll get overdone. But long-term, no. So it's all maybe now, but long-term, if this is the next big thing, just think of our phones in our pockets, our iPhones, your Galaxy, how that changed the world. That's what's coming next. So you're leaving the flip phone. And by the way, the flip phones are becoming popular with kids again, it's amazing. But you're leaving that and you're going into the AI, which is gonna change an awful lot of things. And it's not just the idea, it's already monetized. We're seeing that with Oracle, other companies each day. As you're coming up here, you have a lower low, higher high, but the velocity is unbelievable there. The market keeps running the higher, Bollinger Band, doesn't stay over it very long, pulls back and just keeps its move going, and you have the embedded reading. So when you have a position like this, what I teach in my Bollinger Band course, it's called the Enhanced Bollinger Band course on our website, go under education at irapstein.com, is how to play the momentum with this because the typical trader says, oh, it's at that number, it's overbought. Overbought gets stronger and knocks out the guys that fight it when you're embedded. Embedded means you've changed a, a, an indicator that typically it could be MACD, it could be RSI. We all hear numbers, they get overbought, they get oversold, but they can convert. And that's the beauty that I like with slow stochastics. It has a different personality. It can convert, which takes these red and blue lines to go sideways over 80 for a certain period of time. And then there's a way to come in on the market on breaks that I teach. Eventually, what will happen is you will get a position, the red line will close under 79 and you gotta come out because the game is ended. That's what happened back here. So you had your big run up, similar, you lose it and that's when the correction begins. So there is a way to time the correction. Often momentum leads price, so I'm very comfortable with that. When we come to the NASDAQ, you have a fully embedded reading. This has been the powerhouse. It doesn't give up anything. The breaks until you get the red line under 79. I say the breaks are being bought. There's a way to do it. It's in the course that is taught. Now in the Dow, did we finally get this to embed? You cannot count tonight, Wednesday. We don't know where it's gonna close. So we go to Tuesday. Both numbers are over 80. We go back to Monday, or oh, both over 80, and they were both over 80 on Friday. So now you're in the embedded status in this market as well. So now each market we've looked at has the embedded status. Market's good, and you've got a bullish crossover. The 18-day average has crossed over the 100. So everything on this chart is now saying, okay, big breaks, this is probably the support zone in the market. Doesn't mean you're going back there but that's it. And the market is still a buy on these breaks until you lose that reading. When you come to the Russell, it too is working on this. So we cannot count today. You gotta go back. We don't know if we have three days, but we do know what we did today, Tuesday, both over 80. We know what we did on uh, Friday, on Monday rather. So what do we do on Friday here? We squeaked it out too. So you have a fully embedded reading in all 
four of the indices. So until the red lines close under that number, there is a way that I teach in the course to be uh, aggressive on the buying side. And there are caveats with it, okay? There's certain rules. Here too, I'm looking at how the moving averages are coming together. Is this market gonna grow to the sky? Because all four of these are there. And let's assume that IRA is not right. And I assume I'm not going to be right uh, because what's going on here is the market is saying on the CME Fed watch, 93, 94% of the, uh, the bets are that the market is going to go into the pause phase. That's okay. I won't change my colors. I got what I told you I was looking for on CPIs, both core and headline, they were right in line. And I said, if you get that, I thought that we might still stay with the 25 basis points. I'm probably gonna go down with the ship and you'll never see me again. You know better than that, but it's the way it is. I, I don't, I'm not bullish here, bearish there. Oh, I forgot. If I forget something, yeah, but I know what I was saying. This is that play in the bonds that has me confused, real confused. You have a market that fell apart today. If I come back with you uh, one day on the chart and we can do this, let's see. Here we go. There we go, right here. Okay, this is a big break, 28 points. That's 28, 30 seconds. The trend is down, the bias is down. You'd have to take out today's high in the next 48 hours to say this is a trap, a trap for the bears. It's a continuation pattern to the downside, and this is where you're at tonight. The target, still the lower band, but if it goes down there, I, I don't see it going down there unless the Fed goes into a hike. If they're gonna go into the pause, why are you adding to the back end of this market yield? I don't get it. I'm sure you can write me about it and I don't say that facetiously. I don't get it. It threw everything off for me today. I understand the five year, so if people think I'm right, this is the short end, that's what the market's gonna push on. I get that one completely, all right? And I'm gonna repeat, I didn't see anything there to tell the Fed, hey Jay, Everything's clear now. No, we know the headline's a wild number. It's the core that he goes off of. He, it's what he tells us over and over. So they're gonna go into the, I guess, the skip to see, can they fall another 10th? I don't get it. And here's the weird part. If you go to the CME Fed Watch and you hit the July meetings, there's a 60% chance of a rate hike. What's with this 30 day wait? I, don't, I, don't, I just don't get it. In the dollar index, I get the dollar weakening. If the Fed's gonna skip and the other currencies are going up, that's what puts this down. Fully get it. But I didn't understand why the gold fell on that news. I understand the Euro going up while the dollar comes down. They're probably going with the 25 basis point hike. It's overbought. It's a low risk buy to bet that you're gonna get over the 100 day average in that, but it's in an uptrend. In the British pound, same thing. You've latched on. I mean, the, the banks are telegraphing what they're going to do, not our bank. Those two central banks, and today, if you were watching, I, Mr. Bailey, I saw it. It sounds like a big hawk to me. In Bitcoin, now the question is, and I, I'm reading the articles, people are getting nervous. They're going, why is Bitcoin doing this? Well, we all know Binance and Coinbase, the problems. But people are pulling their money out now. We're starting to see, I was reading tonight before I did this, how much money is starting to be cashed in in some of these. So there's some nervousness out there. We'll find out what that's all about, but the trend is down. The differential between Brent and WTI continues to stay strong, favoring the Brent. Now, when we come over here, you would hit the Bollinger Band, you got a nice rally up. There's nothing bullish here yet, nothing at all. Today, the Biden administration came out tonight and they're saying up to 12 million barrels of uh, oil is what they're expecting to buy before the end of the year. Thank God they didn't give a price. The market will get away from them because the market will, in other words, they'll front run them. So I'm praying that they got something done in there. Uh, that could be every quarter, 3 million barrels, whatever they're going to do. They got a long ways to go. They sold a heck of a lot of oil. Why we're limiting it to 12 million, 
I don't know, why aren't we buying back and filling our reservoir? I guess they know something about the market that you and I don't know. But this is a downtrend. It's oversold. Rallies are still going to met with resistance, in my opinion. I said yesterday, as you fell down and you were challenging the 100, the uh, 50, 45 day, the 18, and the 200 day average, I don't think you want to press that too much. And today, as it turns out, I was right. You do have a lower and low, higher high, and it's trying to hang in there for a little bit. And in that gas, all I've been looking for is my two front teeth. Remember that? Remember that? All right. Let, let's take a look here because I laid this one out for you. And this is what you learn in the Bollinger Band course. You lost the embedded reading. If you lose a reading, you're looking for the 18-day average. How close are we getting right there? Let's see. The high, 238.30, 237 is what you've hit so far. We'll see if it makes it. But isn't it nice to know that you can't be short anymore? At least that's my theory. Looking because the market should make a run to the first major moving average. And we know the probabilities. We're doing a, a whole study on this right now. When I tell you a big study, it's big. It's computerized. We're going back in time looking for the probabilities as to when this doesn't work, how to figure when it's not going to work. And maybe there's a counter trend trade to made out of that. And that's what I'm looking for. But that'll take me a good part of the summer as I'm doing all my work. But I wanted you to see where we're at with all this. And I don't think it's a slam dunk for tomorrow. I'm not betting either way. I promise you, honesty, my clients, now they're out of their stock indices. And yes, we had been, and I can prove it, uh, my written updates, we had been in the uh, NASDAQ and I told them to come out. I said, now we see how the market resets itself. And that's right where I want to be. By the way, I had losing trades last week too, so it's nice to have the winner there. And I, one of my brokers wrote me and congratulated me on it, and I, I loved it. But I had some losers, and I reminded them of that, but we did fine. All right, so you hear me talking about these Bollinger Bands. I want to talk about you. Do you know how to use them? Do you know how to use them the way that I teach? Uh, do you flip them around the way? Do you understand the momentum with them? 15 video chapters. You get the charting software to work with it. You get access to my morning updates for two weeks, both my spider and my futures in the video so that I reinforce what you see. And folks, it's inexpensive. We're not talking hundreds of dollars. We're not talking $200. Go to the website, iraepstein.com under the word education. Move your cursor up here. You can play with it that way. And I'll see you tomorrow. It's going to be an interesting evening tomorrow night when we see what the Fed did. Obviously, I'm thinking the Fed is going to go with the uh, skip, and I think they shouldn't. You have a good evening.